Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is November 20th, 2015, and my name is Lynn Marquedant and I'm your host. Welcome to Fibercast. It is week two of our sampler quilt, so all of you who are out there, welcome and thank you for playing with us. You can see behind me that I have done week one and week two. And as we learned last week, I'm doing two samplers side by side. So this sampler, same one, same one that Karen designed. And Karen, I, the reason I'm a minute late is I was trying to get her on FaceTime. So KB, sorry, I couldn't figure it out with the time I had. But if you're out there, call me or FaceTime me. Feel free to try it. We'd love to get you in on this sampler since it is your design and your inspiration that is uh, that we're all following and we're having a ball. So I'm going to jump right into the two things we're doing today, and it is going to take more than an hour. So for for Julie and others who said, and Marquet who suggested maybe we do a little bit longer fiber cast, I'm going to do the church. And that will probably take us an hour this time. Um, but the two, so there will be homework this week. Basically, there's the 12 by 12 church that I'm doing the paper piecing method. And I printed out a copy. And the copy is available on simplycolorful.com. There's a whole page for the 2015 sampler quilt. Thank you, KB, for posting that. And then I also have the... 12 by 6 inch paper piece trees that I'm going to do. And again, I'm going to start with the church, but I just heard a ding, so let's see who's out there. And I have lots of things to read you from last week for those of you who dialed in, and I hope you've been checking out the pictures of everyone's quilts. They are so fun. So fun to see. Hey, and Chris Myers! How are you? So nice to see. Oh, you're watching. Hi. We, we, we drove by your street today, and Bob asked how you were doing, and I said, well, I need to connect with her because we're trying to figure out when our retreat is. So I'm so glad you wrote. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's definitely get together this week. And hi to Abby. And I bet Michelle Banton at the Marathon Quilt Guild last week was great. I'm sorry I missed that. Okay. Let's see. Who else is here? <laughs> Nothing like checking my cell phone without even sewing a stitch. Okay, let me back up. Beth Allen. She says, progress so far. She sent this today at 1244. We've decided since we don't have our granddaughter this weekend, we would head for the Blue Ridge Mountains for two nights. So she's not going to be live tonight. So Beth Allen, when you call in, I hope, I hope you're excited to see that we're going to show you this. So she says she's not going to be live tonight. Here's my progress on my mini quilt. She's making more pinwheels in the car. Thank you for letting me do this with you. Well, of course, Beth Allen. And Beth is doing the sampler quilt at a half size. So where our cathedral is going to be 12 inches, ultimately hers is only 6 inches. And you should see this. It is so cute. And in fact, I love how instead of making the three inch um, house by paper piecing, she actually did an embroidered outline of it. I think that's perfect. Love that. Well, I hope you have a great time in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I love that part of the world. I want to read you a hello from Eastern Kentucky from a week ago, this is Marquet sent this, and then I promise I'll get I'll get moving on my church. She says, hello, Lynn, and anyone else that may be watching the show tonight. She says, I'm excited to see what colors everyone is going to use for the sampler. 
So happy to see you using your beautiful vintage blue sewing machine. Did you ever name it? And yes, I did. And I reminded her, and she remembered. I'm calling her Olive Oil because if you'll remember, this is the machine that I bought at the Brimfield Fair in the fall and for $40. And it had a beautiful oil can. And I told my husband that that's what I was buying, an oil can. And then when I came with the sewing machine, I said it came with a sewing machine. So um, I love her. In fact, I was just raving about her to Bob, to my husband. We were driving. I forget where we were driving. And I said, my two favorite machines now are my Bernina and my olive oil here. I know you'd think she'd be green if I'm calling her olive oil, but it's really the oil part. And so Popeye's girlfriend came to mind. I think one of you out there suggested it, so thank you. Anyway, Marquet says, Marquet is really, as you know, she has a whole fleet of machines, and she's, she uh, is very knowledgeable in them. And she has other tips, one of which I'm going to tell you about right now, which I haven't done yet, but I'm going to. And it has to do with this, a better alternative to this sticky tape. She says, if you get the magnetic strips from Walmart, you will love them. They are magnet on one side and sticky on the other, but I don't remove the sticky tape. I just stack two on top of each other and set the magnet side, magnet side down on the base of the machine. And she says, I named my Sweet Singer 27 Freebird Franny. She also says that Marquet says she has a few Ohio Star Orphan Blocks already made, so she thinks she'll use at least one of them. And that she includes some pictures, which I'll show you in a minute. So when she wrote this last week, we didn't get to it, and I wanted to make sure to share it. She says, when, I, when she sent this, she said, I'm doing dishes while I watch tonight, and we'll start as soon as I finish on the paper piecing trees and houses. Say thanks to Karen for all her work on the sampler. KB, thank you. And she says she loves my new haircut. And did you hear we had a bear show up and scratch some trees and knock over my mother's trash bin? It took with a bag, took with it a bag of garbage up the hill. Well, hope you have a great weekend, Marquet. Ah, oh, well, we love these pictures. So here are your Ohio stars that Marquet has already worked on. Some orphans. I think that's a great idea to use those. Here she is doing dishes with Fibercast. I love that, Marquet. And then here, is this the bark on the tree? Where the bear was, I bet. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'm going to show you because it's a pretty color. Anyway, thank you, Marquet, for your email. Always love to see it. Okay, so I should have mentioned, you can always send your pictures to me at lmarquedon at gmail.com. Or you can post them on the Simply Colorful website or hashtag Fibercast for Twitter. And I know someone's asked me about Instagram, and I'm not familiar with that. And we have another woman who is driving that for us. And I will take it upon myself this Thanksgiving to learn Instagram, and I'll get back to you on how we actually search. I was hoping we could search by hashtag Fibercast on Instagram as well. Okay, so as a reminder, these blocks, my second sampler, are doing more of the olive-colored green as opposed to the Kelly. And I like this. There were some stars with some olive in it. So that might make for a nice church. There's some white. Hmm. <laughs> you can see I have done no prep on this. Oh, I think that's going to be my, um, my roof. That'll be very deep. I like it. It's metallic. And I bet if I looked at the color wheel, which is on the floor, we would see that these two colors are pretty complementary. Which is why they look so luscious together. Mm. 
have new scissors. And I love them. I sure always use extra material when I'm doing this paper piece, don't I? iron right here. Okay, that's going to be my roof. So literally when I do this big paper piece, I should do this first before I pick out my colors. Uh, because I did just do my last one, I know that I can cut off the bottom and the sides and just cut, I think it's two and a half inch widths of plain fabric. So I don't really need all of those. Are you cringing that I'm using my good scissors on paper? This one with the steeple, I have to paste, I have to piece that one. But these that are two and a half inches, I'm just literally throwing away. So now I have my church. This one printed out on four pieces of paper and I had to tape it together. So I did that before we we came on before I turned on the fiber cast just to save us time. So this is the the door of the church and this will be the side of the church and okay, so now we have all our pieces and we have I think that's going to be that. Take this again. Hmm. There. Okay. use this white, this off-white for the steeple, I think, because I like it. Can you believe Thanksgiving is next week? I can't. Okay, so there's going to be that. I'm going to remember what I've got going on here for the backgrounds. Kind of dark backgrounds, actually. Hmm. You know, I think I'm going to put stars in the background. That might be kind of cute. Actually, no. That's going to be in the background of the big trees. Okay, so let's put that aside. <laughs> All right, here we go. This will be our windows, a couple of green windows. Okay, and Door could be, how about this gray? That'll be good. Door. And then we'll use this white. This is my Dear Jane White. It's no wonder I run out of my Dear Jane White. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's see.
you look you look at the writing here and you put your fabric on the back and then you fold it over. Oh, and make sure to put your stitch length down to be very small so that the paper will pull off easily. Hey, we did our first seam. Not bad for 15 minutes in. <laughs> and I cannot wait to tell you an idea that my mother had that we're going to do on the church, or I'm going to do in the church, but I'm proposing and she's proposing that you do this wherever you want on your quilt. As a tribute to our brethren in Paris and um, just as a way to let them know that we are thinking of them and we are saddened and sorry for what happened there last Friday. I am going to put a little French flag in my quilt. And I think I'm going to have it on my church. But you can put it anywhere. And again, this was my mother's idea. She suggested you could put it anywhere. You could put it inside a little tree. You can make it really small. You can embroider the Eiffel Tower somewhere. Just somewhere in the sampler to commemorate or recognize what happened. Let, let folks know that we stand with them, that what happened is terrible and not right, and we have to stick together, and we can't be afraid. And, um, you know, we can always look back, and it's, it's a way of dating your quilt in a way. So anyway, that is my flag that I'm going to put somewhere, I think, on this church. And I encourage you all to do the same, and thanks, Mom, for the tip. So now I'm just literally cutting out big blocks of fabric to use on this. And I use the studio lights here to line up what I sew. So, it's time to talk about Thanksgiving while we do the second sampler. Second week of the sampler. Who is hosting dinner and what are you making? Let us know. I and Bob are hosting Thanksgiving again. We've been doing it for a few years now, and it gets easier, right? Because we have the the tables, and we have we have plastic tables that we pull out. We have plastic chairs that we pull out, and uh, we do have more people coming than ever before. We have 30 people for dinner, and then we have more people. I think eight more people coming over for dessert after that. So, it's going to be good. It's going to be a lot. Hmm, I wish I had a really light pink or something, but in lieu of that, let's go with a really light gray. That'll be good. So now that I know I'm using gray everywhere, I can cut out pieces. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I must admit, these big paper piece squares are kludgy. Okay. that. Oh, 
special. And then we have to do a couple. Pieces for the steep. Can you hear the band? They're downstairs. So anyway, let's talk about Thanksgiving while I do my little steeple. 30 people. We're going to do two turkeys. We have people bring, actually Mike is going to do one turkey and Joe is going to do the other. Bob will cook them. They'll provide them. And Carol, if you're out there, hi. We're looking forward to your, I think it's carrots, and to Cam's biscuits. Yum. And then for Jean and Steve, I think Bob was going to ask them to do something green, whether it was Brussels sprouts or um, maybe even green beans. Bob tells me that our squash never gets eaten every year. And I love squash. In fact, when I went to visit my mother last week, she made me the most delicious meal I've had in such a long time. It was a plate of food that had so many flavors. It had a sweet potato that she had grown. It had a little mini, but half of a butternut squash that she had put brown sugar and butter in and baked. She had homemade applesauce, a little piece of ham that was delicious, some broccoli. Um, what else am I forgetting? But the bulk of the meal was the squash and the sweet potato, and it was so delicious that I told Bob last night I hoped that we weren't going to leave squash out and that some of us did still like it. So... Mom, we may be peeling squash, but I think, I don't know who else, who's going to bring that because Dave and Katie are bringing the potatoes, and they always do such a good job. They bring a huge vat of them. It's wonderful. Mom and I have a couple of different jobs. We, of course, set the table. We're, I got us gravy. We buy gravy at the turkey farm next in the next town over. Mom, you'll be glad to know we don't have to wait in line for two hours. I bought that yesterday. That's all set. And we have to make pies. And what else? Oh, kale salad. So that will be something green on the table. So needless to say, we're not going to go hungry. And I hope you aren't either. I'd love to know what you're all doing we ran into one of Bob's former teachers, and she was today at lunch, and she was excited to be going into her daughter's house in Boston. She said she was looking forward to just bringing a few dishes. I don't know whether you know whether maybe she's making squash. Who knows? Um, but bringing her contribution and going to someone else's house and just relaxing, which I so hope that's what people do when they come here. That's all I want them to do is just come and enjoy each other's company. And they do. They do, they do, they do. And with it getting dark so early, we may do a fire pit out back, which would be good. Marquet, we don't we haven't seen any bears come close to us. They are out there. But hopefully they don't come close. Did Karen, did you say you saw a bear too? I saw a bear once when we were horseback riding. That was exciting. Up in Banff National Park in Canada. It was one of my most favorite trips ever. I'd been, I was up there for work for an oil show. And, um, oh, that's right. I have to tell you about my trip to D.C. this week. I haven't shown you what I've been doing. So there's my steeple. Still looks kind of kludgy. I'll put that aside. 
let's finish up. Oh, sorry about the creek. Nope, big enough. Okay. Uh, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, horseback riding and seeing a bear. Anyone out there getting any deer? I think my cousin Ben got a deer this week. I think I saw a post about him putting some venison in the freezer. If you'll remember, Ben's the one, the cousin who called in last week, and he said they were having a wild bird, wild turkey. For Thanksgiving. Oh, ding! Who's out there? Oh, KB, hi! Karen says, hi everyone. I am so happy it's Friday. She says, I'm looking forward to piecing these blocks to get me through the... Oh, looking forward to piecing these blocks got me through the workday today. I know, didn't it? Let me see. I have to open up my phone. Oh, KB. I wish you were here. You'll be here soon. In fact, I bet you're here for one of our steps. If I had to guess, if I know you, she says she looked forward to piecing the blocks and that got her through the day. She says she absolutely loves seeing the photos of the sampler progress online. And she says I need to figure out Instagram too. Well, we'll do that together. I know. Don't you love the pictures? I actually, I was going back through and looking at the pictures of the two color delight and what other mystery did we do? Our other mystery, those are so fun to see. I went back and I saw Peggy, Peggy down under, her take on the first year's quilt. I forget what we called that, daffodil and crocus I think is what we called it. Just stunning what she did with hers. She actually, in addition to having it on the bed, and you can see this if you go to the Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt Along. Peggy put the quilt she made, she has a picture of it on her bed, but then she also used it as a table setting. It's just amazing. She used it as a tablecloth. So it should be a good Thanksgiving. We have been preparing the house, as I think you all know. For months, Bob has been working on the trim downstairs, around the windows and around the doors. And he's been putting it up. Well, it's and finishing it and I think for the most part it's up down there there's the top of our church maybe I should cut this one out so what I do now is for me I put my edge of my ruler I create a quarter of an inch off of the outline of the paper pieced. Paper piece line. I'm doing this so we can get a feel for what it's going to look like. So there's the top of the church. Might as well do it with a steeple while we're here. I need 
need a new mat for Christmas. KB or Mom, this mat is completely wearing away. <laughs> Clearly, I need some new blades, too. Anywho. Go. The pile. You can see this, right? Okay, same thing here. I cut a quarter of an inch outside of the line. And then this is one of those cases where I do it a little extra on either end. See how I could have cut it right there and right there? But I want to leave a little extra just so that I can square up the, the block when it's all done. So there's the steeple. That's two pieces. That's going to be pretty. Okay, so now we have to do the main body of the church. And I'm going to have the windows be this limey green. And we said we were going to have the door be a gray, right? So let me put this away for now. Um, I need this white. Yeah, I it a little bit. <laughs> T G I F. Make sure I leave There's that. I'm just going to finger press it. Do I have my iron right here? There we go. Here's another piece done. So I fold it back, right, and I cut my really a scant quarter inch seam. And iron that down. There's the door of my church. cranking. <laughs> so that's Thanksgiving. Some of the stores, at, so Thanksgiving's next Thursday, of course, and then we have Black Friday. And some of the stores around here aren't opening or they're delaying their open. Just 
which is good for the people who are working there, for sure. I'm a believer that they should do whatever they want. People want, I mean, that's the free market at work. If there are people who want to shop and there are stores that have goods that are selling things and they have workers who want to work, go for it. Okay, so I'm just cutting some more white. Get this. I love how this church comes together. I'll finish this piece and then I'll see who's out there. Do one more here. I should be showing you this, shouldn't I? Oh, I had a delicious lunch in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday. It was at the Tadish Grill, T-A-D-I-S-H, and I had mesquite broiled halibut, and it was very good. It was delicious. It um, come to find out, this many you may know this, this restaurant. There's another one by the same family, and um, I guess ownership that opened this restaurant in San Francisco. 160 years ago, the Tadish Grill, one of the oldest ones there in San Francisco, where the workers would go for hearty food. And I mean, they, they, oh, they fly the bread in from San Francisco. Isn't that kind of crazy? But they claim it's good bread. And one of the things is the gimmick, really, is that they don't give you plates for the bread when they serve it. And you just, you eat it, you pull it apart, and there are all sorts of crumbs. And it's kind of like a sourdough bread, and you get crumbs all over the tablecloth. And it was good. It was quaint. I don't know why they need to see. The thing is, I like any bread, so I'm not that dis discriminating or discerning. Discerning. Anyway, Tadish Grill, if you're in... DC it was right down the road from the White House. Lots of security in DC, but um, for the most part, although I do have a story, for the most part, it was a very easy trip. I was all set. I had a 6:30 flight down to what turned out to be. I looked at my ticket, of course, Tuesday night, and realized that I'd gotten such a good fare because my down my trip down from Boston to DC was going to go into Baltimore BWI and then I was going to have to take the mark train into the city which I could do it would take an hour it's not a big deal I've done it all the time so I got to the got to Logan drove in and found out that they had a 610 flight going right into Reagan National and I was able to switch it I was so excited. So that was goodness number one. And the trip in, there wasn't any traffic. My um, 
my toll booth thingy worked. I mean, it was just a good trip in so far. So I go through security, and I didn't even take a bag, right, because I was just for a day, which is a delight. Highly recommend traveling light when you do that. I had in my podcast my Adam Carolla, and I was happy. And I, I got into the airport, and I got my Starbucks, and I got a scone and a, a cup of coffee, and all good. Trip down was great. I fell asleep, got out. Again at Reagan, so you can all you can see the capital when you fly into Reagan, so you know it's not going to be far. And my meeting was downtown on Massachusetts Ave, and it was, so not a big deal. I come out of the plane and I'm walking toward the taxi, and I think, oh, well, I've worn my sneakers, so I should change into my high heels now because I'm not going to have to walk far. The cab's going to bring me right to where my meeting is. So I go into the bathroom and I bring my bag in, my one bag. I'm so proud that I'm just carrying one little bag. And I look, no shoes. I had left them apparently in Boston on the conveyor belt or on the, the bench somewhere. Somehow I lost my shoes. So there I was at 8 a.m on my way to a meeting that I with people I did not know and all I had were bright neon orange sneakers and did you know that at Reagan National Airport at 8 in the morning you can buy men's loafers <laughs> you can't find any women's shoes except for maybe some Lacoste sneakers but I had sneakers on so I bought a pair of men's loafers, black, and even though they were not that stylish, believe me, they looked a little silly, at least they weren't my bright orange sneakers. Anyway, that was the worst part of my trip, so all things considered, it was fine. <laughs> I was able to get over to to my meeting, we had a lovely lunch, then I went over to the Marriott for another, the federal summit that was going on, and I met some partners there, and then headed back. I guess the other bad part of the trip was my return flight was from Dulles, which for anyone who knows the Washington, D.C. area, you know that's much further out. So that was an hour cab ride or maybe 40 minutes. Anywho, glad I did it. It was well worth it. And this, and I it is the truth that I did consider not going given what happened in Paris last Friday night. But I have to keep living my life and meeting my obligations, and that was one of my obligations. How are you all doing? I hope people are okay. It can really rock your world what, what's happening around us and to us. I would encourage anyone who, oh, look at that, our church windows. Now we're going to put our church windows together with our door. But first, so let me clear this away. Anyway, I would encourage anyone who is a little bit, can't stop thinking about what happened in Paris or is, uh, you know, dealing with some terror, some feelings of fright, I would encourage you to talk to people. Because it's very real. Talk to people, write things. Um, you can learn that you're not alone. That um, as horrific as the incidents are, and the fact that there are more of them than ever before, 
effect is that statistically the likelihood and the number of people involved really comparatively is not that many, but that's exactly the, the face of terror is they want us to believe that it is more. It's horrible. I tell you, last Friday night, several of you wrote in and said that you've been watching what was happening on TV and you actually turned to quilting to take your mind off it, which I think is a great thing. I use quilting, med I've mentioned this before, is it's a form of meditation for me. I cannot, in this hour that I'm up here, I don't have to think of the walls that need to be painted downstairs or the plaster dust or anything. I can just be here with you, spending 60 minutes. We know what happens in 60 minutes a lot, or sometimes not much in my case. Okay. Oh, that's not right. Front row. Okay, I'm going to sew the front door to the windows. Folder over. Okay, there's the church. Now let's put the top of the church. Ha! Let's put it around right. Here we go. Another thing I've done, did since I saw you, is I went to visit my mother, and she took me, she invited me on her escapades with her friend and Aunt Nancy to cut wreath-making greens. The cedar trees alone, there were more varieties of cedar trees with the blueberries that were in different sorts of clumps. There were red berries. There were other evergreens that she cut out. In fact, let me look here. And she has already made, there were rose hips. Beautiful. Let me show you a picture of a wreath that she made. These, these are just, oh, cannot download attachment. What? Oh, here we go. So here's one of the wreaths she made. Isn't that beautiful? It's red rose hips, and then there are some viburnum that are deep purpley blue. And then look at this one. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. So good job, Mom. She is known for her wreaths. And the, the garden club down there has, I think she said, 25 people signed up and five more on the waiting list. And they do this every year. They bring them all the greens. We had two big pickup trucks full of greens. It took us all morning to cut them, and they went back to get more. 
Okay, so now I'm going to put the sides of the church on. Then I'll put the steeple on across the top. And then I have to figure out what the base of the church will be. And then, I, then we're going to have to talk about our homework. Who knew this sampler quilt would have homework? <laughs> And I forget what next week we're doing, but I blocked it all out. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this three incher, not even three and a quarter, just to be safe. Okay. And then literally put her on top and sew. One side, set the seam, open it up. One side, sew the other side on. Then the steeple's going to just make it come alive. Baby hums. Okay. That. Open that up. Okay. So I'm just squaring off the top here so that we can put the steeple on. Okay. I'm even going to use a couple of pins. Couple of pins, couple of pins. iPad just fell in trash. Not good. All right. Let's go here. I think I'm going to go a little bit over 9 o'clock tonight because I want to finish this and I want to make sure that I get to everyone's emails. Just to give you a heads up. So we'll probably go to like 9.05 or 9.10. And I will understand if you need to go do something. Isn't that pretty? All right. Now, the question is, and I think I already know the answer, what will we do for the bottom 
I think I'm going to do something pretty like that. Isn't that pretty? It's got leaves. Looks like grass. Okay. Let me do that. And then we'll go check who's dialed in. Okay. Let's put this aside here for a minute. And then we just literally need... Ooh, that's pretty. Like a three-inch piece. Just Up. I need to decide if I'm going to put the flag as a on a pole, or maybe I hang it over a window. Okay. I'm just going to clean this up. Seam, set the seam, and then go down. Ooh. All right, fiber casters. There is a church. So our homework is to do the church and to do the two big trees here that end up being 6 by 12. But before we say goodbye, let's check and see who's out there. Something's dinging. Dinging. Ding, ding, ding. We have some new followers. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. <gasps> Joyce. Hi, Joyce. She says, glad to join you tonight. I am binding my sister's Christmas lap quilt while watching. It's keeping me warm since it's down to 38 here in Maryland. Oh. Yeah, it's going to get cold here, too. She says she loves the color of my machine. She says she'll be late doing the mystery quilt because she has to finish three quilts before Christmas. Thanks for Fibercast and have a great weekend. Joyce from Maryland. That, you too. Good for you for doing four quilts. Aw, Colleen. Hi, Colleen. She says, gosh, I'm out to dinner with my husband. So missing you live, but I'll be watching as soon as we are home. Colleen. Oh, good. So maybe this is delayed. I hope you had a yummy meal. And that's good. How nice to have your, to go out to dinner. Linda, hi. She says, watching live tonight. Yay, I'm so glad. She's working on an overdue wedding quilt, fixing a big boo-boo. Uh-oh. I read it as bamboo first. Oh, boo-boo. So unable to work on the sampler tonight. <laughs> Love everybody's sampler colors. My 10-year-old granddaughter is doing a sampler along with me in Valentine colors. We're just loving it. Thanks for all you do, Linda from Quilt Haven. Oh, thank you, Linda. Excellent. You have to tell us what a big boo-boo is. I bet it's not that big. Oh, Angela from Florida. 
with our infamous blue cardinal. Oh, oh you're going ahead. Oh, I'm so impressed, she says. And I promise everyone I'm going to show you this picture. This is the first time I caught you live. She says, I've been enjoying your videos for some time, and you are delightful. Well, thank you. How nice of you. That made my night. I love all your ideas and your enthusiasm for crafting. Keep up the great work. Okay. She's also enjoying making the sampler. This is what I have so far. You hot ticket. So, oh. When I turn it, now I have to download it again. I remember it had to do that. Oh, for anyone who has been online, I hope you've seen Angela's blues and grays is what she's doing this in. Okay, I have to come back. All right, I'm going to come back to that. While, I, while we're waiting, Marquet says, hello. I'm sewing along with you and the gang tonight working on the sampler blocks. Excellent. She went to the library today and got all the paper piecing parts printed off. That's so smart. That's so good to do it all at once. Now you have them. She says, I'm doing my colors in a smoky blue, black, and white Christmas fabric. I just started on mine this evening and hope to have a block finished before Fibercast ends. And if not, I will post it on the Simply Colorful Facebook page. Excellent. She says she's really enjoying looking at everyone's progress and their colors. I think everyone is doing a great job. She says, no picture yet. Have a great weekend. I think so, too. And isn't it so fun to see how different the colors are? And it's just so fun. Messy Sewing is the title of this one from Lorna. I love it. Man, can I relate. She says, hi, Lynn. Enjoying Fibercast. She's working on a baby quilt. She has a deadline while working on the Fibercast quilt after I'm done. That makes sense. She says, thank you for being here every Friday. It really keeps me inspired. Oh, I'm so glad. Me too. Imagine what we did, wouldn't get done if we didn't do this. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and to all of the Fibercast family. Take care, Lorna. And she sends a picture. That is not messy. You're so funny. But it looks really fun. Love it, your butterflies. <laughs> Thanks for sending that. Norma, hi. How are you doing? She says, sorry, I'm not getting to watch tonight. Her phone is running very slow, so when she gets minutes put back on Monday, she'll watch. That sounds good. She got the Ohio Star done, but boy, am I having a hard time with the paper piecing and laughing at myself for how difficult it seems to me while others are breezing right, right through. Oh, LOL. I wish I had a tape recorder to record myself trying to learn. I do too. And we can relate. Isn't it so funny? Like, it's all backwards. And you just, you get into a rhythm where you have to kind of put it up to the light and look through. I don't know if you can see this. You can see the seam that you're going to sew through. It'll be a shadow. Maybe there, Karen did post other um, patterns, so you can cut them out too. It might not be paper piecing. That might be easier. And you can always do it free form. Oh, Norma. I'm so glad you're sewing. And I'm glad that you're, with all of your construction there, I'm glad you have a place to do it. Allison and she says, interesting you were talking about bears. She says, hi from Oz. We spent five weeks in June and July touring Alaska, Canada, and the California coast and didn't see a bear anywhere. No kidding. Or a moose or a wolf. She says, we did see a bald eagle, eagle in Alaska and a deer near Carmel in California. I've seen those deer in Carmel. They're, they literally, they're on the golf courses, aren't they? But isn't that too bad that you didn't see a deer or a moose or a wolf on your trip in five weeks? Wow. It sounds like a wonderful trip. Allison says she's sewing her big church now in the air conditioner as they have some heat wave there. As everyone remembers in Australia, down under, they're going right into summer while we go into winter. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're cool. 
and that's very interesting. Sandra in Mississippi, I'm so glad you're there, week two. She says, wow, oh, so Norma, I think you might relate to this. She says, wow, all that could go wrong with this block did so. Oh, no. She says, I sewed one of the piece blocks wrong, had to take the whole block apart. Then the thread started breaking. Then she had bobbin problems and finally out wrangled it and finished. Some days are just like that. L-O-L. It's so true. And then other days, isn't it like magic? And you think, wow, something's, something's not, something is working really well. She says, so Sandra goes on, she says, I, brought, I bought a fat quarter bundle months ago of reds, blacks, and whites. Ooh, nice. So she's decided she'd start with that. She may add other colors too. We are eating at my granddaughter's since she has a big house that can handle all our family. Oh, for Thanksgiving, good. I will make a couple of dishes. Sounds like you all are going to have a great time too. We are. And you know, if you spread the work and everyone does a little bit of cooking, it's not bad, is it? And it's such a good time. And it's fun to see the kids that are home, say from college or who are young adults and maybe have their first apartments or we have one nephew who has become engaged since last Christmas. So this will be fun. Um, so, well, that sounds lovely. And I, she says, Sandra says to everyone that she hopes everyone has a blessed Thanksgiving and from Sandra in cool Mississippi. And this is her Ohio star that looks perfect. Look at that. Let me get closer. That's beautiful, Sandra. That'll be fun to look at. And you know, it takes some of the decision making off your plate. If you go with a bundle that's already pre, pre, pre matched. Beautiful. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Creaky chair. Okay, Virginia. I am so glad, Ginny, I am so glad you wrote to me because I have to get this fixed. She says, Creaky chair. Have your husband check the bolts under the seat of your chair. They may be starting to come loose. Just a thought, because it has happened to me. Happy Thanksgiving, Ginny. Thank you. I will. And I bet it has been driving everyone crazy, because it creaks. I will do that. By next week, I will not have a creaky chair. Thank you. Leslie! She says she saw your new quilt last week, so thought I would give it a try, and she got these done so far. Hope to work on more this week. I love paper piecing, says Leslie. And she says, have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, my, those are beautiful. Look at you. Wonderful. Are they all batiks, or are you mixing it up? Let's see, batik, batik. The trees don't look batik, do they? They're... Love that. Oh, I'm so glad you're on board. Happy Thanksgiving. Now, let me make sure I, let me go back to Angela's sampler. Oh, there it is. Okay. And I think this will be posted on the Simply Colorful site, so make sure to go look at that. The middle Ohio star and the house and the trees are what Angela did first. Then, as you can see, she has gone ahead. Not only has she done the church and the trees for this week, but she has done some others. And Maybe that's next week's, so I forget. But I love how you're doing this. And I hope you've seen all the comments. People are really liking it. Which is really fun, isn't it? Sometimes things just I mean, the trees here that you've done behind your church is just great. Well, let me make sure I've said hello to everyone. Hi to Jean. Hi to Carrie. Thanks to our new followers. Let's see. Um, did I get to Sue? Oh, Sue Norton, I hope you're feeling okay. I think you were under the weather. And with that, it's time to wrap up. I know I've gone over, but I wanted to make sure that I said hi to everyone. 
please keep work on your homework and we will do week three of the sampler next week. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Enjoy your, your friends and family and, and what, focus on the good stuff. Keep being creative and I'll see you next Friday night. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining. I have to get this, the mouse to stop. Bye.